Now it's time to hear the stories of Utes in their own words. This is Utes Insider presented by Pepsi. Here's your host, Mike Legaschult. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the show. Well, we are coming down the home stretch for the 2020 2021 athletics year. But before we put this behind us, we want to look back at the performance of the Utah Red Rocks and Milo Keefe at Nationals, who was a champion on foreign bars for Utah Gymnastics. What a year it was for the Red Rocks. They were named Pac-12 postseason champs. They won the Pac-12 regular season title for the second straight year. They won regionals as well at the Mavericks Center and had a comeback for the ages at the national semifinals to make the 4-4 four four finals on Saturday and eventually placed third. And I thought their performance as a team really mirrored that of Miley O'Keefe, their sophomore all-rounder. Utah started their semifinal rotation on beam at Nationals, their best event, but they did not have their best performance that afternoon. And Miley O'Keefe ranked tied for first in the beam rankings most of the year. Had a small break that cost her not only a chance for a national title, but also All-America status on her best event. But she rallied in the last three events, just like her team did. She won a piece of the titles on floor and bars, and Utah came back to place top two in the semis. They held off Alabama, overtook LSU to make that four in the four finals on Saturday. So we'll talk to Miley about her performance as well as her teams at Nationals. We'll also talk to Miley about her pre-Utah career. She had an outstanding elite-level career before she came to Utah. Should be a fun conversation. Milo Keefe, when we come back in just a moment. To hear more episodes of this show and other Utah Athletics podcasts, search for them on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. Now back to more of Utes Insider presented by Pepsi. And welcome back to Utes Insider. Please be joined now by two-time national champion gymnast Miley O'Keefe, a Las Vegas native who has made her home here in Salt Lake City. Miley, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you know, let's talk about your background a little bit. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about uh, in terms of this past year and, and your Utah career, but I think it's kind of fun during this podcast to get into people's backgrounds and really let our listeners get to know um, these people who join us, athletes, coaches, and so forth. So you're a Las Vegas native, and gymnastics is one of those sports where, you know, Kids tend to get into it early. It's, it's one of those things you don't fall into later on in life when you're a teenager. Most of them get an early start. So for you, Miley, when did you start? When did you know, you know what, I could be pretty good at this sport? So um, I was two, almost three, and I had gotten a Christmas present from my aunt and uncle whose son did gymnastics at the place that I started. And, um, you know, just from the start, I think I really loved it and the coaches who also owned the gym spotted me when I was really little, maybe not three years old, but around four. And they were like, we want to move her up to team. And um, my mom was a little hesitant because, you know, as you said, we start really little in gymnastics. And um, so I started working out with the team. You know, I went from four hours a week to like 10. And that was a big jump for me. But yeah, uh, back then it was like, there was no level two and three. It was just level four and you had to be six years old to compete. Um, so I did a few exhibitions when I was like five years old at level four. And, um, you know, I think I really started to realize I'd be really good at gymnastics when I went, I did two years of level four, a year of level five, skipped level six, did half a year of level seven and half a year level eight. Wow. And by the time I was nine years old, I was a level nine, um, which is wow. really crazy. Um, yeah. So I think that's when I really um, started to realize, you know, maybe I could do really good with this. And that was about the time I started homeschooling so I could practice even more. Um, so now my hours kind of went from, by the time I was like nine years old, I was training maybe 20 hours. Wow. Um, yeah. So um, when I started homeschooling, that meant I could do more gymnastics. So then my hours went up to 25 hours. And then I did two years of level nine and I skipped level 10 actually and went straight into junior elite by the time I was 11. You had a, a rapid progression, it sounds like. And, and obviously those moves happened because people saw your talent, but for you, did you sort of get a sense yourself? Wow. I'm, I really stand out from the people in my gym and, and this is moving quickly. Did you get a sense yourself at that point that, you know what, I got a chance to, to do something pretty special here. You know, it was weird because I was nine years old and a level nine and I was training with girls who were 14 and 15. Yeah. So, I mean, I was always just the youngest one in the group and I, I think I sensed it a little bit, but 
it was fun training with the older girls. You know, I was, I was a big girl, so to speak. <laughs> um, but, yeah. That, that's awesome. Uh, to, to hear that, that it really was a pretty quick realization for you and the people around you, what you could do with your gymnastics and, and so forth. But, you know, there's so many kids that, that chase that dream and to do so they have to move away from home. And you were fortunate that you had a gym in Las Vegas, uh, which is your home that you could go to and, and do the homeschooling and so forth was, did that make things easier for you and your family to say, you know what, let's let her do this as opposed to say, you got to move to Arizona or Texas or wherever did that play into the equation for all of you? Yeah, for sure. I got super lucky. Um, I started at the same gym that I ended my JO career at, um, which not a lot of people can say, honestly. Like you said, they end up moving to go to elite or, you know, just sometimes like the coaches at your club gym, they don't necessarily like have the training that you would need to be elite. But I kind of grew up with my coaches. Like their coaching grew as I grew as a gymnast, which was really special. Um, you know, and we have, our team has grown a lot since, since then. And I think it's really cool that I got to stay home. You know, I think, um, being able to stay in Vegas was really nice because, you know, you never want to have to leave home to chase your dreams. So if you can chase your dreams from home, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. You, you realize how lucky you are. I mean, to have coaches that can start you out and like, like you said, grow with you. That's, that's very, very rare. In terms of your coach's backgrounds, I mean, when they moved you up and said, hey, we've got someone pretty special at nine, 10 years old, did they feel like, hey, we can we can get her where she needs to go? Or were there some concerns on their end that, hey, maybe we do need to encourage her to go someplace else to really let her become who she can become? No, I don't think they ever thought that. I, I really think they wanted to grow with me. And, you know, you build a relationship with them. And they were like my second parents. And they were really good about getting outside resources to help them grow as much as they could. Um, we did a lot of like extra little camps with national team coaches and, you know, they did everything they could to help me and grow themselves. Miley, I'd like to talk to you about your family background a bit and your parents, you know, some elite level athletes come from a background where their dad's an accountant, their mom's a teacher, and they really have no athletic background whatsoever. But uh, your family, I know your dad plays in football and your mom was uh, a pretty good performer as well. Just talk about their background and how that maybe shaped you to become what you become as an elite level gymnast in college and also internationally. So my dad grew up in Downey, California, and he was a high school football player. And then he moved up to semi-pro football and my mom grew up in Bellevue, Washington, and she was square dancer, ballroom dancer, uh, for a long time. And my dad actually moved to Washington. That's where they met and they were ballroom partners for a long time. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Did you ever think yeah, about ballroom cool. dancing yourself or was it, no, I'm, I'm in the gymnastics. I got my thing. I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I never really played any other sports when I was younger. It was it was always gymnastics and um, ballroom dancing. I mean, my dad and I, we would dance in the backyard when I was little. Or, but I think that's why I have such good coordination. Right. I like to think that's why. Yeah. And I like to think that's why I'm a good dancer. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about your uh, pre-Utah career. And uh, it was pretty impressive. I mean, you were the first gymnast to sign with Utah who was – a PNG Championships national champion in the yellow round, and you did that in the junior division. Obviously, a, a great career. So, just talk about some of the highlights of your pre college career in terms of elite international competition and, and just what that did for you in terms of developing you into the gymnast you become. Yeah. So, um, like I said before, I started elite at 11 years old, and I was the youngest elite in the United States at that point. Um, you know, as a, as a little baby, I just was kind of there for the experience my first couple of years. Yeah. Um, and then I made my first PNG championships at 13, you know, it was my first one is a little scary. My first day doing like a two day competition. And then in 2016, I kind of just broke through skill wise and maturity wise. And, um, I got, Sixth, I think, at Secret Classic, and then I won my first national championship that summer. And then the next 
March, I got my first international assignment in Canada and it went really well. I got first all around there and got first team. And then later that next month in April, I went to Italy on the U.S. national team and I got second all around and we also won team again. Um, And then I also won my second national championship in the summer of 2017 at 15 years old. Um, And then later that year in September, I went to Japan and I won all around gold there as well, which was amazing. I love Japan. That's that's pretty awesome to to travel like you did. To be that age, Miley, and, and traveling the globe to compete, I mean, it can freak out athletes who are in their 20s and, and 30s to do things like that. You're a teenager, very young, doing all these big things. At the moment, at that time, did you realize and have a sense of what you were doing, or were you just so like, this is so normal to me, I've been preparing for this, I'm good? Uh, what was kind of your level of awareness of what you were doing at that point? Um, it was kind of scary, you know, like being – international gymnasts for the first time and you see them and they're just as good as you and you're like uh yeah uh, <laughs> uh. and then you're like it's okay you know we just came to do gymnastics yeah that's about it um but i mean obviously there was jitters and is a little nerve-wracking but it was so fun to be able to travel the world um with some amazing girls that i made on the u.s national team um but I don't know. It was when I think back, I don't think about all like the stress or nervousness. I, I just think of how fun it was to be able to travel the world like that. You know, Yeah. you don't, not, not very many like 15 year olds or 16 year olds get that chance. Not many people period get that chance, let alone being a teenager. You're right. Well, that's great. Well, Hey, today's show being brought to you by university of Utah healthcare with 16 convenient Neighborhood Health Centers, we have a game plan for your family's health. Visit uofuhealth.org today. Visiting with two-time national champion Utah gymnast Miley O'Keefe on the Utes Insider podcast. Well, Miley, I want to talk about the last two years for you in just a moment, but before we get there, you know, just talk about your your final years on your own before you came to Utah. You were someone who, again, got to the elite level very, very soon. There's always the thoughts of, you know, do, am I good enough to make the Olympic team? Where do I go from where I am? Do I go to college? Do I just say, you know what? I've had enough. Uh, I'm going to try and make the Olympics. If not, I'm done. You know, at what point did you think about, okay, where can I go with this in terms of Olympics, uh, college? And when did Utah become part of that equation for you? So it's funny because when I was a young elite, I had it set in my brain. I was going to go to the Olympics. I was going to make money. And I didn't want to do college gymnastics. Yeah. You know, then you mature a little bit some things change. So um, I started looking into Utah and Utah started looking into me when I was about 12 years old and I was in eighth grade. Um, So that was really cool. And um, Tom would come to visit and all the assistant coaches would come to visit at that point. And it was just, you know, cool knowing that somebody had interest in me like that. Yeah. Um, But I retired from elite gymnastics uh, when I was 16 And then I had two more years of high school left. So I was supposed to come in in 2020. And, um, you know, I was visiting one time and Tom said, hey, we have an opening if you want to come a year early. And I was like, "Uh, well, we're halfway through the school year. I I don't have enough um, of my credits done to graduate in May. And he's like, okay, well, you can always come, you know, in January of 2020. And I was like, okay, so I'd be coming like (laughs) half a year. I'd be coming half a year late. Like, I don't know if I want to do that or not. And then I went home and talked to my high school counselor and was like, I really want to graduate in May. Is there any way we can make this work? He's like, well, yeah, you just need a full more year of English and a full more year of math. And I was like, okay. So I was taking six classes and start of that semester, I ended up taking 10. I was taking three math classes, three English classes, um, and then all of my other classes. And um, I ended up graduating 
May of 2019. And I was here in June. So it was a really quick jump, a lot of change very fast. Yeah, I'd say it was. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize you had to do that much to get it done. But so you talk about this class load. You know, at that point, you said, okay, I retired from elite gymnastics, but you were still training some, I assume. So just break down how you had your day structured to make all that work by May of 2019. So I was still homeschooled, but I had a program called Odyssey Charter Schools. Okay. And so with that, I went onto campus one day a week for four hours. So I went Wednesday mornings from 8 to 12. And so my week would look like this. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, I woke up and went to gym from 9 to 3. And then I would come home and do homework. And then Wednesdays, I would go to the school from 8 to 12, go to the gym, and train from 1 to 5. Wow. Yeah, that's a full day. That's a full week. (laughs) It's a full week, for sure. My goodness. But um, I think it was well worth it, you know, coming in that year early. I love my class, and I, I think it was the best thing for me, honestly. Yeah. I would think in some cases or in some ways, you know, once you said, okay, I'm done with the lead, the next thing was college. And to just say, okay, you know what? I know where I want to go. I know what I want to do. I just need to get there. That that helped sort of motivate, get you through this. Is that about right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think after doing so many years of the lead and I think another year in J.O. would have like broke my body down so much more than just coming to college a year early. Right. Because we have so many resources here like the training programs and the conditioning and just i mean it doesn't get much better than what you got here at utah for resources well worked out well for you and for utah as well visiting with miley o'keefe a two-time ncaa national champion who joined the youth for the 2020 season so let's go back to that freshman year miley and of course we know how it ended unfortunately with no pac-12 championships no nationals a lot of the things that you kind of worked toward all year and really all off season were taken away from you guys last year but you came in and really had a good year you were second team all-american on beam uh first team all pac-12 on beam you had a, a really good season but i know you had high expectations and uh, Michaela Skinner left. A lot of people are looking to you to kind of be one of the people, or if not the one, to sort of fill that spot. So just look back at your freshman year in terms of your expectations, maybe the pressures you felt, and how things played out during that 2020 freshman season for you. I think coming in to college, and I was reading some of the articles, um, you know, saying Milo Keith, two time junior national champion, set to fill some big shoes after Michaela Skinner leaves. and this and that. And so, I mean, I think I put some like internal pressure on myself and just like college competitions are so different than elite competitions in elite. It's you yourself and that's it in college. It's you and your team. And I think the pressure was so much different. Like it's different having pressure when it's only for yourself versus when it's for your whole team and for the program. Right. So I I don't know if I truly knew how to handle that pressure my freshman year. And, you know, I had a, like you said, I had a good freshman year. Um, definitely not what I was typically expecting from myself. But, you know, I was, I had big changes that summer. And I just think um, coming into my sophomore year, I was well more set. And freshman year was great. We had a great team. Um, we did really well. and you know, getting that season cut short was really hard because I think we all saw how good we were going to be in postseason, and we just never got to do it. Yeah, you guys were a legit top four team, and you were peaking at the right time. I mean, Beam was coming together, and you could see the potential for a great March and April was there, and it was taken away from you, like you said. But, you know, I talked to Tom Farden last fall, Miley, and he said, you know what, this break, everyone – is going to take it differently. For some, it's going to be really hard. In fact, it's hard for everyone, but some will come out of this better than others. And some, it's been a much needed break. And I know athletes, you're so wired to, you have your practice and competitions and your schoolwork and you're very structured. And and I've talked to some who said, you know what, it was tough at first, but looking back, the break we got and the change we got has been refreshing and allows us to recharge. And Tom said, in Miley's case, I think this was one of the best things that could have happened to her. He said, she came back, 
in a different space mentally and had a chance to kind of heal up and, and take care of some of the physical ailments that have been limiting her. So maybe just talk about Miley, you know, when things were shut down in, in March of 2020 and everyone was sent home and you're doing online school and, and our lives change, how you took that time and looked at it from the standpoint of here's a chance for me to take care of some things. You know, what was your approach when you sort of went into that stage about a year ago? Yeah. Um, getting shut down and not being able to train was really weird. At first, Tom was like, all right, everybody, you have to go home for two weeks and then we'll see you back here and we'll have the gym open and this and that. And yeah, so we went home and then two weeks later passed and Tom was like, yeah, you can't come back um, just of yet. Uh, so I was like, well, nothing is open here in <laughs> Vegas. What am I, what am I supposed to do with my life? Yeah. I've never just, never just had school. Um, so the first couple of weeks were really weird and really hard. Um, but then, you know, you, you get to reflect and you get to spend some more time with yourself and more time with your family. And for me, I think it was really good because I'd never, ever taken that time. Like if I got a, a week off from gymnastics, that was a really, really, really rare situation. For me. Yeah. Right. So having three months was so weird, but you know, I took that time to realize how grateful I am for gymnastics and for Utah and the things that I get to do here and the people I get to be with when I'm training. And, you know, of course I did like some little home workouts and, um, but I really just felt like it was a, a time to step back and look at it from an outside perspective of what I get to do and the opportunities that I'm brought. So I feel like I was just so much more grateful for everything, you know, and then you come back. And of course, training is hard in that summer. When we first came back, we're wearing masks in the gym, running, conditioning, everything. Yeah. But you're, everybody's going through the same thing. And that's what Tom was telling us. He's like, we got to start June 15th. UCLA didn't get to start till October. Something like that. Something crazy. So he was like, look at all these months we have ahead of everyone else. We're so lucky that we're in the gym right now. And it was just like this weird experience because nobody's ever taken this much time off. So we're all struggling. But, you know, we're struggling together. So that's, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> in a matter of speaking. Yeah. And, and Tom's always so good about seeing the positives and, and making those, um, those images clear to his athletes and his staff. Like, hey, listen, we are in a great position because of this or that. And, and you're right. UCLA and, and the, a lot of the California schools had a rough, rough fall or the winter in terms of training and so forth. You guys, the, the Red Rocks were so good. There was not one positive test. I know you guys had just a crazy schedule getting into the gym, working around things, but you guys, you made it work and it paid off for you in the end. Pac-12 champions, regular season end uh, at the championship event. So you had a great run in nationals. Just talk about Miley, the resiliency and really the focus of this team to get through a challenging year as well as you guys did in terms of, you know, no issues with COVID-19 that were major and, and just the things you had in, in March and April. I think at the start of the season, we were all kind of cautious because we were like, well, are we even going to have a postseason right. or are we just competing to compete at this point? But one of our things was, well, we don't want to take things for granted, end up with the postseason, then we're not ready. So, I mean, we took every competition as it came. We didn't look too far ahead. We didn't look behind, you know. Um, we started off strong at Best of Utah. We went to OU and we struggled a little bit. But I think, honestly, it was a good thing for us because you realize what you have to fix and what you have to do to get better. And um, like you said, this team was really resilient. And we were really good with COVID and we didn't have a single positive test either through the athletes or through staff. 
Um, you know, our, our schedule is crazy. We're getting tested once, twice a week. Um, you know, it was all worth it in the end. Like you said, we had Pac-12 regular season champ, Pac-12 champ. Uh, we came out of our regional as the top seed and and nationals was just a blast. Yeah, I'll say it was a blast. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Visiting with Mario Keefe of the Utah Gymnastics Program. Today's show being brought to you by Pepsi. Grab a Pepsi and some friends and get in the game. Pepsi, a proud partner of Utah Athletics. Well, Miley, you had just a tremendous year. You go to postseason ranked 11th on bars, tie for first on beam. You're tied for six in yellow round. And, and of course, big time expectations going to nationals. You were the Pac-12 all-around champion. But let's talk about your semifinal Friday. That's where they decide the All-Americans. And you were uh, a champ as it turned out on bars and floor, but your best event beam didn't work out for you. And you had a small break that was enough to knock your scoring down. You know, obviously, to be a two-time national champion is tremendous, but I know for you, you're competitive. Beam was your best event, and it didn't work out for you on that semifinal Friday. Just talk about maybe the disappointment from your beam performance and then your focus to get back on track and be a champion on bars and floor at the end of the day. Yeah, so beam was actually our first event. Right. And I'm the anchor. So I get up and do my team. I hit my series really well. I hit my leaps really well, and I'm doing the dance section after my leaps and I bobble on dance and I finished the rest of my team it was really nice and I I know it was a big bobble my leg came off the beam or whatever and I was I was pretty mad um to say the least I think visually you could tell and I try not to show my emotions so much like that but it was just hard because I knew I had come in ranked first and I knew I had a good shot if I just hit a beam routine to have a national title on there. Um, and so we moved to floor and I think I was still a little bit upset, but I couldn't, I couldn't let it ruin the rest of my competition. And so Alexia Burge came up to me during floor warmups and she was like, Miley, it's okay. It's one event out of four. Just do your thing for the rest of the meet. And I was like, okay, you're right. So I had an outstanding floor routine, the best of my season, honestly. And it was just fun. And I got a 9.9625. So, I mean, it was really good, obviously. I am co-national champion on there. And then vault was good, you know. It's vault. (laughs) (laughs) And then I went to bars and I hit a really nice set handstands everywhere stuck my dismount you know it was our last event we were in third place at that point and I honestly went up for that routine thinking uh my last routine of the season because I didn't know if we were going to make it to day two right I said last routine of the season might as well make it good and obviously I did I did a really nice routine and I got um my career high tied with it and I got a 9.95 and I am also co-national champion on that event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You had a great performance and uh, you know, Kendall Robarts Pond and I broadcast it from Salt Lake on radio. And, and once you hopped off beam, we could tell you were, you were not happy as you said. And, and Kendall's like, it's such a small thing. I mean, she had this great routine, but just during her dance, had a small little thing that showed up kind of out of nowhere and otherwise it was spectacular, but that cost you a chance to win nationals. But I thought your reaction sort of mirrored the team. It was like, okay, beam was one of your best events all year and not just your teammates just weren't as sharp as they had been to start the semifinals. And we're like, okay, that was a big event. The score wasn't there. Can they recover from this and still make it to the, the final four on Saturday? And I thought your, your, uh, approach, sort of carried over to the team where everyone said, okay, we, we got to start from here. Well, let's go to floor. Let's go to vault. Let's go to bars. We don't know how it's going to end up. Let's just do our best. It turns out you guys held off Alabama who was charging. You chased down LSU to make that top two on Friday and move on to Saturday. Miley, just talk about what the team was, was going through when you go to that last event again, bars um, had been your weakest event the entire season. It had gotten better late in the year, but that was an event where if there were struggles, that's where they had come. And yet you guys went out there, had your best score of the year. You held off Alabama. You chased down the LSU to move on to that final two. Just talk about the team's approach to that event and what it was like sitting around for about five minutes waiting for the final scores to come in to see if you moved on to Saturday. 
So after vault, um, I think Sydney, one of our captains, she could tell we were a little down in the dumps. And she said, all we can do at this point is swing bars. So let's have fun. Um, and then we always huddle before, right before we compete. And on bars, our thing is, Tom says, what time it be? And we say, game time. Um, but before the huddle, all the bar workers are standing there. And I say, hey, guys, look at me. Like Sid said, all we can do is swing bars. So let's just have fun and do our thing. And, you know, it started off with Abby. She had a really nice set. Got her dismount. That's always a good feeling. Having your first person stick sets the tone. Obviously, it did. Alexia had a nice routine. Alani had a nice routine. Emily had a really nice routine. I had a nice routine. Crystal had a nice routine. Um, it was funny because after I did my routine, I was so excited. I came off the podium and Alexia looked at me and she goes, LSU's counting a 9-4 and a 9-7 right now. Right. And I said, what? I looked up at the scoreboard and I was like, oh my goodness, we might actually make it. And, you know, I think... Standing there waiting was one of the most anxious things I've ever encountered. <laughs> and going from this like really low after vault to waiting and then getting this high of seeing Utah in second. I mean, I, I'm i sure there's a picture somewhere, but I, I kid you not, I cried for 10 minutes. I was so excited. I think just the roller coaster of emotions, this low to this really high high was like it was crazy i had never felt a feeling like that i don't think i'll ever have a feeling that tops that not even winning a national championship honestly it's a great feeling i know that for sure because i was an individual champion junior national champion but winning it with a team obviously is different but i don't think going from that low to that high will ever be top that's amazing to hear you say that because you had this great career as we talked about before Utah. You've got two big time years ahead of you, and and to hear you say that's the best moment for me. Winning nationals won't top that. To hear you say that, one, it, it kind of uh, addresses what you talked about is adjusting from performing for yourself to performing for your teammates in college. And and to hear you talk about that semifinal Friday, you, you talked very little about yourself, very much about the team and the team's approach to those final three events and what it was like to sit and wait for those scores to come up. Um, it seemed like right there to hear you say that, you understand it now. You understand college and Massey, so you bought into this idea of the team and you understand it and and uh, you carried your team to, to Saturday. Uh, it's amazing to hear you talk about that and the emotion that was uh, felt by you and everyone on Friday. Let's talk about Saturday a bit. I mean, just to get there um, at that point, like, okay, the, everything from here on out is, is a bonus. The, the Utes made the final four, but you guys went out there and had a great meet on Saturday as well. Third place. I mean, uh, the two teams in front of you have been, uh, you know, top two, three in the country all year. It was a very competitive final four. You guys went out there and, and yeah, you left a few, you know, hundreds and tents out there, but very strong performance. Just talk about you know, how you felt about Saturday and, one, the being the final four, and, and two, the way your team competed in that final four format on Saturday. So we were really excited to be able to compete in the final four. And at that point, it's kind of like leave it all on the floor because we have nothing to lose at this point. Yeah. That was kind of our mindset going into day two. Just leave it all on the floor, have fun, and let's do it. And um, we started really strong on bars again. And we went to Beam and Beam was outstanding. I mean, we didn't we didn't count a score lower than a nine point nine from after Alexia's routine, after Lucy, then Crystal, then Abby, then Adrian, then myself. We didn't count a score lower than nine nine. We got like a, I think we broke a school record for our Beam score, but. I mean, after being, you were just on this high and then we carried it over to floor and, you know, we went to vault and we had an outstanding vault rotation. Jaden had the most amazing vault of her career. And or, I've yes. said it multiple times. Like if she sticks that vault, there's no way like the judges can't give her a 10. Like she just has the most amazing vault. Like 
super high, super clean, and then she stuck it. And it was, I mean, I think there's video somewhere, but the excitement, we all ran down, you know, high-fiving everything. And, you know, Lexi had a really good vault too. And it was just, uh, it was so fun. We could see Jaden's vault coming all year. There were flashes of her potential and, and her performances. And as you said, they, they hit that vault in the big stage. You guys gave it your best. I mean, I don't think you can look at that Saturday and say, you know, we really you know, did ourselves in. You, you had a season high score. You performed so well. It was just that competitive with that final four. But um, a, a great finish. I mean, to be top three in the country uh, and in that sport is is just tremendous. And the future for this program, Miley, is so bright. I mean, you've got Michaela Skinner looking to come back, a couple other women trying to make the Olympic team who will join you next year, and and Emily LeBlanc is the only routine you lose from this team, and everyone else is back. I mean, the, the, the potential for next year and beyond is huge for this program. So as we wrap things up, Miley, maybe just talk about sort of how you, how you look at the future with this team and also kind of where you are. I mean, you, you went through the transition from elite to – college gymnastics to, to go into school in person and, and just, you know, a couple of years of a transition that has worked out well for you. Now you seem to be really understanding how it works at the college level. So maybe just talk about the future for this program and for yourself as well as you look ahead to the next couple of years. Yeah. Um, so like you said, we have a few girls who are going to stay home and train for this summer that are coming in the fall who are training for the Olympics, Grace McCallum and Kara Eaker. And we also have Sage Thompson coming this um, fall. And so that's a great recruiting class. I mean, two top tier elite gymnasts and then a top tier level 10 from the state of Utah, actually. And um, I'm not sure on Michaela's um, standing, but yeah, she has talked about coming back. So, I mean, we're, we're pretty set next year and then um following years you know i just assume with our projection of how good we're doing you know our recruiting classes are going to stay at at the best level and you know um my future uh you know i'm going to work on some upgrades this this summer i want to be a solid all-arounder for us and with that comes a one and a half on vault and uh I want to change some skills around, you know, I've been doing the same skills from freshman to sophomore year. So might as well show a little bit of the skills that I have <laughs> in my pocket. Um, yep. So just kind of relearning some skills that I had in elite and going to throw some new routines around and see what happens. Well, as a gymnastics fan, as someone who's around the team, I, I can't wait for next year to come. It just said, Michaela, she's not sure what uh, she's going to do. I know she's looking kind of her physical situation and had a tough time with COVID-19. As she went and, and mentioned on social media. So she might not come back, but even if she does not, the, the talent coming in to join this already very talented team next year, pretty impressive. You guys have a chance to have a nice, nice run here the next few years and perhaps get that next national title for Utah. You know, Miley, we appreciate your time coming by and, uh, Again, two-time national champion to do that in the, in the same national meet at that stage was huge. A great start to your career and uh, excited for what's ahead for you. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks so much. All right, that's Miley O'Keefe, two-time national champion gymnast of the Red Rocks. Back to wrap things up in just a moment on Utes Insider. For more on Utah athletics, including up-to-date schedules and ticket information, log on to utahutes.com. Now back to more of Utes Insider presented by Pepsi. And today's show brought to you by University of Utah Health with 16 Convenient Neighborhood Health Centers. We have a game plan for your family's health. Visit uviewhealth.org today. Thanks again to Miley O'Keefe for dropping by. Just so fun to hear her tell about her stories uh, as an elite level gymnast and her success and her thoughts about trying to make the Olympic team, maybe making some money, not going to college and to go from that mindset to I'm going to college and I'm also going to graduate high school early to cram in that many courses in that short of time to get here in May of 19 to participate in the 2020 season and just everything she's gone through as a gymnast, as a person, to listen to that story about her recounting the, the moments at Nationals when they were done on bars and they were waiting for the other scores to come in from LSU and Alabama to find out if Utah would make the Final Four on Saturday to have her say, I cry for 10 minutes 
I'll never be that emotional again if we win a national title. That's pretty big stuff for someone who was, again, a very successful elite-level gymnast. To care that much about team, to understand team the way she does now, that, that certainly speaks to how much she has really bought into this idea of being a gymnast for the University of Utah and a bright future ahead for that program. Again, two elite-level freshmen coming in, Michaela Skinner perhaps coming back, and it should be a bright future for the Red Rocks. My thanks to Mike Gillen on the technical side. Thanks to Miley O'Keefe as well. That will do it for our show today. I'm Mike Lager. So thanks for joining us. Until next time. So long, everybody. This has been Utes Insider presented by Pepsi. To hear more episodes of this show and other Utah athletics podcasts, search for them on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube.